Hello, everyone, and welcome to MANA Ministry and a happy new year. We are in 2022, and we're excited to start off the new year with a, another episode in our series, Truth Prescriptions. So this is a mental health series we've been doing now. This is our 21st episode. My name is Dr. Katie Elson. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, one of your hosts, and joining me is my co-host, Chriselle. Hi, everyone. My name is Chriselle Lasteran, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. Yes, and we're excited for today's episode, one that is very much needed to start off the new year on the right foot. As a reminder, we have our disclaimer here that the purpose of this show, this episode, and overall series is not to substitute treatment. If you do have any questions and concerns about your mental health, we encourage you to seek out a professional. Yes, and if there's the event that there's a crisis or an emergency, we do encourage you to call your doctor or 911 immediately, or in the event that you may be having suicidal thoughts, you can call the number there on the screen, 1-800-273-TALK, to speak to a skilled professional. Yes, now before we jump into today's episode, we want to just briefly remind you of our last episode entitled Known When Alone. We'll briefly summarize what the episode was about, talk about the truth prescription or the homework that we had, and then we'll jump into the next episode. Chriselle, what was this episode about? This was about loneliness. We talked about how during the holiday season, oftentimes we may feel lonely. And we also talked about how there's that clarification. We assume that if someone's completely by themselves, they may feel alone. But we learned that there are oftentimes individuals who are in large crowds, they are in contact with individuals, yet they still feel alone. Yes, and I remember how we talked about the, the effects of loneliness um, and not just on our emotional health, but even our physical health. And so uh, we're not going to touch on that today, but just as a reminder, if you haven't watched the episode, please do. It's powerful, maybe for yourself or to share with others. And we really wanted to do it during the holiday season. Um, and if maybe even sometimes, you know, starting the new year, some people may be feeling lonely and discouraged. So please share with others. And so the truth prescription, the application um, was that loneliness is a state of mind. So check, challenge, and change your thoughts. Um, and like you mentioned, Chriselle, you could be lonely, even surrounded by people. So it's important about uh, checking and changing our thoughts. Then the second one is to connect with others, be intentional, whether it's to call, to video chat, reach out because a lot of times we wait for somebody to reach out to us but that person may be also waiting and so it's important for us to connect and then we talked about the importance of when known when alone is the only person who can truly empathize and know kind of what we're going through and therefore can be there for us it's constant and unchanging is God so connect with God and those are great things to uh, include also as you start this new year of life be intentional about connecting with others, changing your thoughts, and connecting with God. Any last comments about that episode, Grisel? No, all I can say is if you haven't watched it, go check it out. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, Grisel, do you mind praying for us um, before we introduce our episode for today? Of course. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God in heaven, Lord, here we are yet again with another episode. We want to thank you with our hearts filled with gratitude for all the knowledge that you have given us in the previous episodes as we embark forward, particularly in this episode, Lord. We pray for your guidance and um, in regards to the subject matter, Lord, we pray for a restoration, for healing, and for peace in each of the lives of the viewers who are watching. Thank you, Lord, for being such an amazing God and for being the source of all truth. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today's episode, and I know we say this a lot for self, <laughs> really powerful. And I'll just say, you know, for a lot of my clients, this is something that is often a big barrier in their ability to move forward, to mm -hmm. progress. Maybe they've made a lot of changes, but this one thing is really, really a big barrier and challenge and hurdle that people sometimes choose to never overcome. Yes. And we're going to speak briefly about this, but I think also this subject matter uh, can apply to any and all of us. 
And sometimes we may not be aware of how this may impact our mental health, but we realize how it impacts our physical health. And oftentimes we go to the doctor and wonder why is it that they can't figure out or why is it that this medication isn't working? It's because sometimes we, we carry underlying emotions that we don't resolve. And that's where mental health comes into play. Yeah, so some of our viewers might be already thinking, well, what is it? What's so <laughs> we need to talk about? Today, we're gonna to be talking about anger and resentment. And our title is resentment or contentment. And you notice here that there's a choice. And this individual here is making that choice. We don't know exactly what was the outcome, but we all have a choice and we'll talk about anger and resentment and that choice today. Yeah. So well, maybe- let's just start off with the basic, right, Katie? Mm-hmm. Let's just start off with the basic of understanding, okay, well, let's define what is anger and what is resentment, right? And are they one and the same? What would you say, Katie, to those questions? So they're definitely not one and the same and that's why we wanna define them. Um, We'll start with anger because that's kind of the most common um, that we talk about or that we express often. You know, there's different types of anger. There's passive versus aggressive anger, righteous anger versus anxious anger and so forth. Um, And so there's a lot that can be said about anger. Um, But one of the things I want to address is anger often gets a really bad rap, right? Oh, you, you shouldn't be angry. Or a lot of people who feel angry and maybe have anger outbursts, they notice it's really hurting their relationships and they just tell themselves, stop being angry, right? Anger, again, has a very negative view or connotation to it. Now, one thing I really appreciate about the Bible is that it has a different perspective. So I wanna read a couple of verses in order to kind of demonstrate really what is anger all about and, and is it really bad? or does it depend, or is it good? What exactly can we learn from the Bible about anger? Now, one of the the books that talks most about this is Proverbs, Um, but before we go there, one of the most quoted verses is probably Ephesians 4, 26. Crystal, do you remember what that verse says? Ephesians 4, 26, yes. So it's interesting. It says, be angry. However, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. So it's like, wait, is the Bible giving me permission to be angry? Yes. Right. There's be angry and do not sin. So that tells me that anger is not necessarily bad, right? There's a distinction. So the question then is, well, then what's the sinning part or or what's the bad part of anger? Mm-hmm. And that's where we see a lot of um, that, those answers found in Proverbs. Now, I'm just going to read two. There's many, many, um, but I just want to read two in Proverbs 14 and then Proverbs 15. So Proverbs 14, 29 says, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exacts folly, folly coming from, you know, we're more aware of foolish, right? Somebody who's foolish. So we see two key words there, a contrast, slow to anger and hastiness, right? Mm -hmm. Now, before I digest that, we're going to read the second one, Proverbs 15, 18, a hot tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. So again, we don't see just the Bible saying anger is bad. We see a contrast, a contrast between being slow to anger and being hasty or being hot tempered, one who stirs up strife. And that's an additional point of those who are not only hot tempered, but they're also looking ways to kind of stir it up in other people or in conversations or in interactions. Mm -hmm. So this is important to clarify then to feel anger is not wrong. The question is, what do you do with that anger? Right. And that's why there's differences between having righteous anger versus anxious anger. We're not going to go into that, but just realize that anger in itself is not bad. It's what you do with it, how you respond to it. Yes. Um, We see that also in James 119, where it says, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. And one of my favorite verses is Proverbs 16, 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. So it doesn't say he who does not feel anger whatsoever. He who is slow to anger, 
better than the mighty, he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So it's really how you manage your anger, which we've used this verse in prior episodes regarding emotion regulation. Yes, because if you think about what is anger, it's when you feel as though something has been done wrong against you, right? And so if you choose to ignore that, you're not addressing the problem, that you're not finding resolution. So we want to address it, but the question is, how do you address it, right? Yes. And we talked about this in a prior episode that, you know, emotions are always good, Mm -hmm. right? They communicate to us and they motivate us to, to do something. So anger communicates something of injustice or wrong has been done, motivates me to correct what was done. So if I see somebody, a child being um, beaten, right? That anger gets, you know, triggered within me and that communicates that is wrong and motivates me to protect that child. Yes, but however, oftentimes what happens is that there may be some other emotions such as fear of one of being vulnerable and expressing and addressing the anger. So we tuck it away, we don't address it, and then it can manifest into something else. And what is that, Katie? Resentment. Mm-hmm. Now, also, I want to clarify what we also mentioned in a prior episode is sometimes the emotion is good, but the thoughts behind it are incorrect. So you're like, oh, that person did something to me that was wrong, but it's your perception. So we're not going to go into that too much today, but you can change your thoughts that are fueling anger. Maybe that's not justified. So there's kind of justified and not justified anger. When we're talking about, um, when the Bible's talking about anger, right? It's saying being slow to anger and ruling that and really checking, you know, why am I feeling angry? Um, but resentment, we're going to focus on specifically because resentment is not just an, a feeling of, of anger, um, but it's, it includes something else. And we'll kind of put that on hold and see what the Bible says about resentment. Yes, so can so. you read for us Ephesians 4.31, which if you think about it, follows the verse that we initially read 4.26 that says, be angry and do not sin. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians chapter four, verse 31 reads, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. So there are a lot of different things that are all put together there. Do you want to kind of explain, Katie, how that pertains to resentment? Yeah. So you, some people might just read this and say, well, anger, it says anger, put it away from you, but it's really the combination. It's talking about all of these things, bitterness, that's can often be kind of a synonym, a synonym to resentment, um, bitterness, wrath, and wrath is kind of like the um, anger outbursts in some ways, right? And clamor and slander when we then use, when our anger comes out as putting, as hurting others, right? That's the slander, that's the clamor. Um, and so it's really that bitterness in our heart, that resentment in our heart then um, gets, Mm -hmm. what was that? It manifests and it begins to create, like, you know, we talked about Katie having a tree in, in therapy, right? There's the root of it. And then all of a sudden it begins to manifest into different branches. Yes. And it can be hurtful for ourselves. It can be hurtful for our relationships, which we'll talk in a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about the definition and it's, I love looking at the original, the origin of words, um, and resentment In English, we might be like, does that resent? Like, does that mean to resend something? But the original word is actually a French word, which comes from resentir. So in Spanish, you might understand what that means. Resentir, you know, to re means again, over and over again, once more. Um, And then sentir, or in Latin is sentire, means to feel. Now, this is very fascinating because so the original resentment, it wasn't necessarily negative. You could also refeel positive emotions. Mm-hmm. But the English translation then became one of a negative connotation. It's not just to refeel, but it's to refeel anger over and over again. So Crystal, what is what's a practical example of that? What can you give an example to show that resentment is anger being felt over and over again? Hmm. I don't know if I have one off of hand. I'm resentment felt over and over again, which is anger felt over and over again. 
So maybe like a, a client or maybe if you've experienced it, but when something happens and then we kind of store in our minds and our hearts, and then instead of letting it go, we bring it up time and time again. So I've noticed when I work with couples um, as a marriage and family therapist, that oftentimes there, there might have felt a, a particular moment where you had anger because something you thought was done against you. However, you don't address it. And so the years go by. And now every time that your partner or your spouse does something that has nothing that could anger any particular person, but for you, it rubs you the wrong ways because it resembles something that initially had rubbed you the wrong way and got you angry, but because you didn't address it, every time that this person does something that resembles it, it brings up that resentment that you are carrying over and over again, which is refueling that anger over and over again. Yes. That's a good example. Cause that can really poison a relationship because if you carry one thing then two things and three things, and I've heard couples who, who say, Oh, that one thing you did five years ago. And I'm like, wow, imagine carrying so many feelings of anger and refeeling it over and over again. Now we can also think about this. So that's a very good practical kind of everyday example. Um, we might think about deeper wounds. You know, uh, I was assaulted. I was raped. I was molested, fill in the blank X amount of years ago. And I can I hold that anger towards my perpetrator for how many years? Now, I want to be very sensitive when I say this, um, and, and we'll talk more about forgiveness in a future in the next episode, mm -hmm. but this, this quote would probably help capture what I'm trying to communicate. They say that anger is drinking poison, hoping that the other person dies. So when I mentioned that these people are holding these individuals are holding anger or resentment for all these years. I'm not saying that their anger is not justified, right? We're, we're, we talked about that. It's, it's not about justified or not. It's about refeeling that anger over and over again, that you're being hurt, not the person, not the perpetrator. You're trying to punish them for something they did, but you are the one that is suffering. You are refeeling, and we talked about this briefly before, Chriselle. It's like you had a wound X amount of years ago. They hurt you, but you're choosing to open that wound every single time. And so that wound never heals. Ouch, ouch. And we know, right, as they say oftentimes, two wrongs never make a right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So resentment is resentir, which means to refeel over and over again. And you're choosing to refill your anger, drinking that poison, hoping that the other person dies. Yeah. Wow. Now, the Bible illustrates this. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 7, 9 says, be not quick in your spirit to become angry. Again, we, we saw that before. It says, for anger lodges in the hearts of fools. It's saying, don't lodge that anger in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. And then Proverbs 17, 9 says, whoever would foster love covers over an offense. Be intentional about trying to foster love. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Are you choosing to refeel, to repeat a matter over and over again, or close that, you know, heal that wound and move forward? And move forward with your life. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear, right? The difference between anger and resentment. And now the next question that comes to mind is, as we address with other topics, what are the effects of continuing to engage and carrying and harboring anger that then can lead into manifestation of resentment? So we're going to go into the physical, psychological, um, emotional, social, and spiritual effects of anger and resentment, because we know they are present, right? So just starting off with the physical effects, uh, they say here, According to an instructor in clinical psychiatry at the Wake Forest University School of Medicine, research has shown that in just two hours after experiencing an angry outburst, the chance of having a heart attack doubles. Wow. So that's just one research I looked into, and there are a lot of other studies that come to the conclusion that pretty much engaging in anger and, of course, resentment, which is anger, just continuing forward, right over and over again, which we could say increases the risk of having cardiac 
health problems. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there's a lot more um, detail to it because when we have anger, it can um, increase our adrenaline, it can increase our stress, cortisol hormones. And so that in itself begins to, to I guess, eat our body inside and impacts our, our, the health of our heart. Yeah. So that would, that would be the number one effect, um, of physical effect of anger. And we see a dramatic impact on the heart. And I, I love that example or that research you just shared, Chriselle, because it just two hours. Yes. So that's kind of a temporary one. A long-term one is repressed anger. That's where you, you know, don't express it or, or maybe you express it indirectly or you try to kind of stuff it down it's associated with heart disease. So there's heart attack, which is kind of an event, but a chronic disease, you can develop a chronic disease. It's associated with a chronic disease of heart disease. And it, it says here, one study actually found that people with anger proneness kind of as a personality trait were at twice the risk of coronary heart disease. That's dramatic. So you could be at more risk of a heart attack for just kind of an anger outburst, or if you foster anger uh, or have repressed anger, you it can actually contribute to a heart disease, a condition. Yes, we'll notice with everything in life, there's a short-term effects. When those are not addressed, they lend and lead into the long-term effects, right? Okay, now another physical effect is it impacts the capacity of our lungs as well. And so a group of Harvard University scientists studied around 670 men over 80 years of age using a hostility scale scoring method to measure anger levels and assess any changes in the men's lung function. So what they found was that men with the highest hostility, so carrying anger ratings, had significantly worse lung capacity. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And so they theorize that an uptick in your stress hormones, which I, I mentioned previously, which are associated with feelings of anger, creates inflammation in the airways. Yeah. And that makes perfect sense if you think about both the heart effects and the lung effects. If you're, we talked about this in an earlier prior episode, if you're turning on your sympathetic nervous system, right? You're um, taxing your system, you're overworking your system. It's great for just the moment to react to danger, but if your heart is pumping extra blood, your, your lungs are trying to dilate more and more to be able to, uh, to breathe, right? You're taxing your organs. Yes. And so that leads into, you know, the obvious you are inhibiting your immune system. And so if your immune system is inhibited, that comes along with a lot of long-term problems. They even say that you feel more physical pain when you don't address negative emotions in your life. And that can lead into having arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic pain. Um, there are a lot of studies regarding individuals who experience in negative emotions in a particular moment. They rated their physical pain higher and more intense because of that experience and lingering of negative emotions. Um, and overall, anger shortens your lifespan. Because if you could think about it, having this constant flow of stress hormones and chemicals and associated metabolic changes in your body, that's gonna shorten your lifespan. So when they say smile, be happy, live longer, it's kind of true. <laughs> One, one study I do want to mention is um, at Harvard, they did a study in healthy people. Okay, this is really important that simply recalling an angry experience from their past, just having them recall it, caused a six hour dip in levels of the antibody immunoglobulin A, the cells that are our first line of defense against infection. So we could probably have a, a, a brief little moment where we talk about maybe COVID and anger, right? It, wow. We need our immune function to be at its top right now. Um, the mom, yes. What was that? We need it at its optimum right now. Yes, exactly. But it's just interesting. Six hour dip. That's a long time for just recalling an angry experience. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, okay. So those are the physical. Yes. 
right? Now, of course, there can be more to that, such as the short term. I have patients who come in and tell me, I, I always have these headaches, tension headaches that are going on. I have a lot of di digestion problems, um, insomnia, um, having even skin problems. Sometimes they say, uh, what's it called? In Encema? Eczema? Eczema, right? Even eczema yeah. in itself could be a result of a harboring negative emotions and not addressing them. So there are a lot of different things associated when it comes to anger. So I don't know about you, but I want to address my anger. <laughs> so now regarding emotional flex, we're not going to spend too much time on this one because um, I think some of it may be more like common sense, right? Um, of course, anger is an emotion, so it's going to have emotional effects, but it can also contribute to other emotions and also conditions, disorders. It can make anxiety worse. So researchers have found that anger can exacerbate symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. Um, now, it says not only were higher levels of anger found in people with uh, GAD or uh, generalized anxiety disorder, but hostility along with internalized unexpressed anger contributed greatly to the severity of anxiety symptoms. So it can worsen and intensify um, anxiety as well. Yes. And so just to add on, uh, when we have anger and then we continue to harbor that anger into resentment, you begin to develop a, a different way of thinking um, developing a different habit of negative thinking that can alternate your perspective of reality. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I see it with my patients. They feel like it's so real. And then we put down all their thoughts and then I read it to them. They're like, yes, it's true. We work on it. And then they realize those are not true, but I felt it was true. So it makes it very difficult for you to see positive outcomes in your life. So you kind of go and follow this perpetual cycle. So we want to change that cycle. Yeah. And that can also contribute to depression, right? If you're constantly looking at life in a very negative way, oh, so-and-so hurt me and so-and-so, and you're holding on to that, then that can also contribute to depression. But one of the things we see the most, Chriselle, is probably the impact uh, on social um, relationships. When I, of course, and again, some people might say, oh, that's common sense. If I harbor anger towards a, a person, um, that can contribute to having poor relationships or no relationships, but what are other ways in which anger or resentment impact um, our social relationships? Well, oftentimes it can lead to self-righteousness because if it's always about the victim, the victim mentality, oh, they done wrong against me, 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 you become very, you get to the point where you may be incapable of seeing the perspective of others. So it could skew your perception of reality, um, which then can lead you to not wanting to interact with particular individuals, leading to isolation, and then leading to loneliness. I mean, there's just over and over so many impacts. Um, it can lead you to having rigid boundaries. We talked about boundaries. Mm -hmm. It can lead you to having ineffective communication. Because if you're having all these negative thoughts, thinking, oh, they did that against me because of this, 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 your communication with that person in terms of it being effective is going to be inhibited. Yeah. And so um, there's just there's endless things that could come as a result of um, manifesting anger and then leading into resentment over the course of time. Any yeah. others that Katie, I haven't mentioned? Yeah, I wanna mention it, it, anger and resentment, it, it inhibits vulnerability, right? Because, and often people express anger because they don't want to be vulnerable. And we'll talk about that, I don't know, in this episode or the next episode, but a lot of times it's not actually anger that you feel, it's sadness or hurt, but you think, oh, anger is more powerful. It's more, um, maybe I don't know how to stand up for myself. So I often, I'm aggressive, but it inhibits vulnerability. And it actually then vulnerability could allow you to actually address that hurt and that sadness. So eventually you don't even get what you want, right? Yeah. And, I, and one last thing that I think I've noticed in my own work with my patients is that when you harbor um, a lot of resentment and anger that you carry over the years, grudges, it makes it very difficult to live in the present. Yes. Because you are always thinking, thinking, thinking this, 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 feeling, feeling, but not necessarily being in tune, grounded with your present moment. And then that makes it hard for you to, to overcome anxiety. Because your mind is somewhere else to overcome depression because your mind is in the past. And so, I mean, I would just say, 
I think it's so important to be present. I mean, to have the Holy Spirit to communicate with you, to have clarity of your mind, to be in the moment is so significant when it comes to your mental health. Yes, because if you think about it, the moment today is the only opportunity you have to build your life, to change your life. So if you're caught up in the past, then you're not changing, right? And again, a lot of the things that have been done to you are justified. I mean, your anger towards those people or to what has been done is justified. But you holding on to that, it's again, you drinking the poison and not allowing you to live life. So those are some of the social effects, but also there are spiritual effects. So how does that impact? How does anger or resentment impact our spiritual life? Well, I think it, I don't know if it's obvious, maybe I'm just saying it's obvious, but um, it, it inhibits, it stunts your spiritual growth. I don't know about you, but when I feel negativity towards others, I don't want to get close to God because I feel like it's God in the Bible is going to bring clarity to me and make me feel as though maybe what I'm harboring is not justified. And it makes me feel like I'm in the wrong. So it may inhibit um, your spiritual growth. Um, it also... Resentment inhibits God's forgiveness upon us, which I thought sometimes we don't think about. So that's found actually in Matthew 6 chapter, no, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. Do you have that, Katie? Because I'm going to have to look it up. Do you have it? Yes. I. I, Is that the one that talks about? Yes, I have it here. Okay. So it says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. And so, of course, it's not like, oh, okay, I want to forgive you because I want God to forgive me. But it's 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 true. Like, if we are judging others, we're going to be judged the same way. Mm. And, and God wants us to have mercy upon our brothers and sisters because he has mercy upon us. Yes. And I, and I love that, Crystal. And, you know, as we wrap up today's episode, I, I want to leave our viewers with some sort of encouragement. Of course, we will cover in depth um, how to forgive because of course it's like, oh, well, now I'm identifying resentment, but what do I do with it? We'll talk about that in more depth at the next episode. But what you just um, mentioned, Chris, I want us to kind of dwell on that a little bit more of really the most, the best way to, to start kind of dealing with resentment is by thinking of how God forgives us. So you mentioned, okay, you know, we don't forgive others. How could God forgive us? But just dwelling on how the Bible talks about that he takes our sins and throws it to the depths of the ocean, never to be remembered again. If we think about how many times we've hurt God, we we think about how many times we've messed up, we've done things to other people, to him, and yet God forgives us liberally, unconditionally. He didn't say, well, only if you do X, Y, Z. He says, you know, John, um, first John one nine says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He gives us forgiveness unconditionally, liberally. And so my question would be, why are we so conditional and stringent in our ability to give, to extend forgiveness to others? Mm -hmm. And remember, not just for the sake of, for others, but why not give myself the gift of forgiveness for me to move forward? And that's really the, the title of our episode is resentment or contentment. The choice is yours. God has modeled to us that when we extend forgiveness, right, there's blessings and joy for us. Do I choose to hold on to the anger and resentment that is literally, literally killing me? Or am I going to choose to let go and to choose contentment? Yes, I love the Katie that you mentioned about forgiveness towards ourselves, because sometimes we think forgiveness has to do with another party. But oftentimes we harbor anger towards ourselves and resentment towards ourselves that then manifests into a negative thought process leading into not wanting to come boldly to the throne of God and ask for forgiveness. Um, And we silently, you know, suffer. And God wants us to come to him and he wants to embrace us and show us how much value we have versus isolating ourselves and wondering, why is it that my life is not improving? Why is it that I feel stuck in my life? Why do I feel empty? Yeah. Yeah. So again, 
there's a choice, right? There's a choice that we have of whether or not to hold on to resentment or to choose contentment, hold on to resentment about something that some, someone has done to me or resentment towards myself, anger towards myself of something I have done. Choosing contentment instead of resentment. And so yeah. our application for our episode is to begin to identify the anger and the cause of the anger. Question, is it really anger or is there an underlying emotion like hurt or sadness? And then you can refer back to the motion cycle to express, to learn how to express that emotion or emotions. But if it's resentment, begin identifying the grudges that you hold, whether again, it's towards others or yourself. And then we encourage you to tune into our next episode in which we'll talk about how to forgive. And there's a book that's called Forgive to Live. And we know that that's the truth because the more that you hold on to resentment, the less you're able to live a life of contentment. Wonderfully said, Katie, wonderfully said. So why don't we go ahead and bow our heads in prayer? Dear Lord in heaven, we wanna thank you for the knowledge that you have just given us, Lord. We pray for your encouragement, for your strength to be, over, to be able to have those moments of reflection and acceptance of the moments that we have either, either done wrong against others, have caused them to carry anger, Lord, or for those moments in which we continue to carry grudges, Lord. Um, for others who have hurt us. So we pray for peace, for resolution, and ultimately, Lord, to be able to forgive and come to you, Lord, asking for forgiveness as well. We pray that you be with each and every person who's watching this episode. And thank you, Lord, for being a God of mercy. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Now, if you think about it, we cannot live a new, happy new year mm -hmm. if we hold on to resentment. And so that's also our encouragement is to enter into the new year, learning to forgive, to let go and to move forward. We'll see you in two weeks for that episode on forgiveness. And we want to encourage you also to not to forget to sub subscribe, to follow, as well as to share with a friend, because we're all in need of these precious truth prescriptions. And don't forget, Kersel, to have your daily dosage of the truth. Why? Yes, because the truth will set you free. <laughs> Alrighty, take, take care, care everyone bye